Hello everybody, you know, welcome to this. Uh, I'm doing this video today just to like, you know, help some of you out there who have this QRQ1 Hammer scooter or maybe the QRQ Power, the QRQ Mini. They all be manufactured with the same company, so I think similarly might be the same, you know, problem with them, I don't know. Anyway, uh, before I bought this scooter, I, I was just looking, man, I was just looking because I, you know, I'm tired. Sometimes you're like, you know, driving short distance from here to here. So I decided, look, listen, let me get something. If I don't need to drive any, if I maybe like, you know, long distance, I'll just take something like, you know, like go to the shop, come back from the shop, go to like short distance, you know what I'm saying? So I was on the net looking. I saw so many of them, you know, some of them quite very, you know, hefty price of money. I don't pay them money for scooter. It's just a scooter, man. So... I got this and I got quite you know, a few positive re uh, review on this one and uh, the other ones, but I choose this one, the QRQ One Hammer. Uh, it's about £1,099 in uh, UK, London here, that's where I live, so I bought this. And before I bought that, you know, I, I, I've, I've heard a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, a lot of people make comments about, you know, uh, how bad these things are, you know, how, you know, the tires, you know, after a few right tires got punctured, they can change the tire, the brake, they can adjust the brake, you know, I mean, so many comments. Of course, yeah, when you spend that much money, buy something, man, you want to have peace of mind, you know what I mean? Like, you know, just enjoy it and relax without being worrying about all these problems. But sometimes, you know, it can be a little bit that you have to, you know, give a little bit of consideration to the thing as well. Me, personally, uh, this thing here, it's really nice, like it's really built solid. QI did a good job, you know. Frame is very solid, everything. But you all have to understand one thing. A QR is the owner of this. QR design is made it, but QI will have to get accessories to be able to put this into working order. What do I mean by accessories? It's like, uh, we're talking about uh, the, 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 the horn, you know, the, the, the horn accessories, the USB cable, the accelerator, some of the cables, the, the, the shocks, the rims, the tires, uh, the moto, I mean, so many things. QR don't manufacture every single part. QR might manufacture the whole body, maybe the whole body with, a, with, with some of the friends, but maybe the shocks are manufactured by a different company. Uh, the horn are manufactured by a different company. The, I mean, the, all these auxiliaries, like, you know, the, the, the cables, the brakes, and all this. So the only problem I found with QR is uh, if they know that people are having this problem with a scooter, complain about that, then they had to make sure that the upgrade version of these this scooters, the purchases are made from a very durable, you know, supplies that supply very durable parts. Otherwise, you know, no matter how good their scooter is, they will always have this kind of problem. You know what I'm saying? So I bought mine. I ordered this on the 24th of August, 2018. I live in London. And I was so excited. I mean, they say it takes up to 25 days, you know, to come here by. I was surprised, like, this thing arrived within seven days. I was even shocked when I, when I, when I saw the thing arrived, I'm like, well, uh, is that a mistake or something? But yeah, did I write? And it looked very beautiful. My first impression, I was blown out when I saw this the first time. This thing is huge, it's big. I was suspecting something very small, according to how it looked on the website. This thing is big. This thing, when I put a whole, you know, level of the steering up, it's more than half my body. It's really like very, very, very solid. And it, 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 it's not that heavy, but it's a solid build. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, when you see this, man, you, you, you're you going to say that, look, uh, the money is worth buying that. But then yet a problem comes. And the problem is, well, nobody want to pay that much money. And then within, at least, they should be able to enjoy it for maybe like at least a year before starting to have some problem. Okay, the point aside, it depends on the rider's behavior. If you ride this thing, you know, carelessly on anything in sharp object, of course, the tires gonna get punctured. But if you take out the tires and know that it's deemed to be punctured any time, then you you might not be having that problem. Well, I had mine for uh, five days, just one minute. I just need to check and be sure that uh, the message I'm getting is going through. Yeah. Okay. I had mine for five days, and unfortunately, it broke down, and. Well, I was sad because uh, I mean, five days is very, you know, limited time. And I don't want to have something fired and the thing just break down. But come on, man, it's machines. You know, machines do that. Even cars, you know. So I was upset. But the good thing is instantly uh, I was uh, on the way. I, I decided to go to uh, work with that, uh, that day. Uh, just like this, just test the way this thing goes. You know, according to what, 100 kilometer, you know, or 60 miles in a range per charge. I was on the way going, just about, you know, 10 minutes to the right. 
and the scooter is stopped. It stops, but it's still power, the power is still on. I thought, okay, sometimes things malfunction, so I put it off and put it on back. And when I press my throttle, which is this one here, I just flash arrow sign. Nothing is happening, scooter is not moving. That's a headache, man. I have to drive this thing all the way back home and take my car, which is quite very uncomfortable and very, 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 uh, very in, uh, inconvenient to me and I believe to everybody out there. Nobody want to be found in that situation, but that's it. Okay. I instantly on my way, you know, I just stopped somewhere. Then I, I messaged Cure. They said you can contact them to Facebook. So I messaged on, on Messenger. And man, believe me, I, I was shocked. The quick response I get, I didn't expect that because I live in London. They're in China, somewhere in Taiwan. So the time different, I think it's going to be like maybe I'm going to get a, get a reply within 24 hours. But instantly I got a reply. I was shocked. And I keep communicating with them. They tell me that um, what's wrong with the scooter. I wrote to them in English and probably maybe, uh, don't get me wrong, you know, I, I don't speak Chinese. So if they were to write something in Chinese to me, I'll probably be struggling as well. So they said, send a video. So I made a video of how the team is. And they said, okay, what you have to do now is put the scooter off and on. And when the scooter is on, press the power button four times and see what code came up. I did exactly like that. And on my, it's coming at 0003. So I, I took a picture of the code on the uh, instrument cluster or the spirometer and sent it to them. Then they replied to me again. And all this is happening simultaneously. It's not like, you know, I waited four hours or five hours to get a reply. No, I sent a message out with I got another one. And they said to me, um, it's to do with uh, the controller. And I said, controller? Well, uh, well, I don't know what that is, but uh, when I read about it, it's the thing that is like a, a power pack of a car. It's the thing that controls the signal to different parts of, of the, the scooter. If you press the horn, it's that thing that made your horn sound. If you break the brake light, it's that thing. So that thing is literally the heart of the scooter. Without that, nothing is in the way. So I'm like, okay. So I said, okay, what do I do? I mean, there, there, there's no path here. I mean, here there's, there's nothing. They're allowed. Don't worry. Uh, we will send you a path. And we're going to, you know, guide you of how to go through it and get a scooter working again. Also, maybe, you know, maybe like I decided maybe just to send this thing back because then I started reading. I started, I started reading about, you know, because I read a few reviews, but not deep. I started reading about people's review and people wrote quite such, uh, you know, a lot of horrible things about this scooter. We, I can understand the frustration. I was frustrated too, but come on, man, let's be real. The problem here is not, uh, let's say, like Kiwa. The problem here is more like, yeah, there's a problem, but sometimes... It's not that bad, you know what I'm saying? It's not that bad. I mean, if the problem is the instrument controller, if I get a replace, the scooter should be working. So even though I'm frustrated, I can't use the scooter till I get a controller. And also to see, uh, will I be able to do it? That's another set of it. That's another frustrating thing also because not everybody's handy. Uh, in my situation, um, I'm lucky because I'm quite handy. I, I fix my cars, you know, things only do what I'm there. I'm not an electrician or, or a car engineer, but I grew up fixing things. So uh, I knew how to fix it. So I'm like, okay, look, listen. And then I sent an email. Then I got a reply from some guy from the United States saying, okay, look, listen, uh, we are in charge here in you know, a customer relation with QR. So we're going to make sure that this thing works. This thing don't work. You send it back. We'll refine your money. we we'll send another one if you want the same thing. But for now, I've ordered Kiwa to send you the controller. When it comes, let me know. I'm going to guide you through the whole thing, and then you're going to face it. So I was waiting. Yesterday, I got an email that uh, I got test that the, key, the, um, the controller arrived through DHL, and it's going to be delivered to me. I was excited because I just want to get this in running. You know what I mean? So when I came out, I had to look loud to you know, take this in apart. Then I took my apart. I took my apart. Uh, the thing is, I would have done video, you know, taking this apart for you guys to see, but it's not anything you can. If you listen to what I'm saying, that's exactly what I did. So what it is that when you take the scooter, you look on top of this, you see that it's, there's a small screws on top. It's about, on this side, you got about four of them. Then under this strip here, there's another two at the back, near the back, there's another two under the red strip. So you have to peel the red strip up and look under. There's two there. Then you got another four on the other side. Then under the front side, so there's another two. There's two different things. The ones around the side and the back, they are coming as a bolt and knot. So I'm going to just come close and show it to you guys. So 
this one they come as boat and north so you have the boat on top which is with alarm key and then you have the knot at the bottom now the way to take this thing off we made i managed to have some hand tools at home you know sometimes just in my cars i picked this one actually from my car i keep them in my car in case anything happened so i have a a knot socket i'm just gonna come and don't worry about the drill you don't need a drill but i have it so it's easier I had a knot socket which is gonna hold the knot under like this then once i hold this knot under like this which is under the deck then i'm gonna go with my drill with the alarm key on top and then once i operate it the knot hold the bow knot to 10 and this should come up if you don't hold it once you lose it the bolt and the knot are going to be turning together. So you might be there whole day turning. You're thinking something is wrong, but no, they're just turning together. So the, the bolt is not coming out from the knot. So that's what I did to take all of them off up to here. Then at the front bit, there is no uh, knot. It's only bolt going in. So that one, you only need to use your alarm key or whatever you're using. You can get alarm keys, you know, I don't know, a one pound, two pound from any shop and put it in and screw it. The only bad thing is that Kiowa should have included a simple tool set like alarm keys or something in case if somebody needs to do something, but I think they're quite very sure on the scooter of the way they make it. This scooter is very solid, you know what I'm saying? If it's not because someone of their suppliers let them down, or maybe they want to maximize their profit too much and not buying too much quality from the other suppliers, they might not be having this problem because the scooter inside is very solid. It's just the part that they bought from the third parties like this controller. QR don't made a controller. It's probably coming from another company. QR don't made the tires. They probably buy it from another company. The shock, QR don't make them. So all the stuff that I've mentioned before, they don't manufacture by QR. It's just like when you're making a car. Yeah, you make a car, but some of the auxiliaries, you have to order it from other, uh, you know, dealers. The people who made those things, you buy it from them and they use it to finish a product. That's what QR does. So... I've taken the deck off and when you unscrew all the bolts you realize that this thing is still tough man this thing ain't going nowhere you pick it up to whatever it's not going then i realized that now because this scooter is rated ip65 water resistant that means you can ride it in the water uh you can ride it when it's raining up to setting maybe setting our ip65 you know those of you have iphone they mention that it can go about you know is it three meters how many meters you you guys found about that one so that means that they have to make it watertight because this is metal to metal and normally metal to metal they're like a gasket in cars they use some gasket seal that's what they use in car I don't know what seal they use but they use some sort of silicone silicone those of you don't know what silicone is it's just something like a toothpaste you know a toothpaste that you squeeze to brush your tooth but this one is not a toothpaste there's like some jelly thing coming out and once you pull it uh, they use it to seal things to make things you know very solid when they get dry so i think that's what kiwa you know uh do so uh what i did was with my is i don't know you know when i start lifting and i just realized that no come on man there might be something wrong with this so i grabbed a kitchen knife from the kitchen and what i did was i put a kitchen knife just on the side here and type it up little Type it up a little, don't type it all in because you never know, it might be cables or something, I don't know. So I just type it a little, I know that the deck got some clearance before going into the hole. And everything else in is inside our hole. So I tap it a little bit, I tap it all around, tap it all around, tap it all around. And then I went back again and when I'm sure that I start moving, then instead of going deep this way, I go on the side and I tap it. And I do it like you're cutting something. So I did it like this. Then I start cutting through the silicone. Then I feel that I start moving. So I did that all around. And finally, that I got a silicone cut. So when I cut the silicone, you can see the silicone line. You know, you can see them, you know, that's it. So that's all the silicone work. I kind of, I had to clean mine because I'm going to pull this back. If you ain't clean yours and you put it back, you might be having water lay because the dry silicone is going to prevent this one from getting the tight that this one need. So I have to clean it to make sure all the excess silicone on top of this plate is all clean up well. I did mine. You can see here. It's all smooth right here, ready to go. So that was it. Then once you finish that, I'm just going to bend this a little bit so you guys can see what's inside. 
But you see that it got some blue thing there, very long blue thing that's a battery. That's a big old wobble battery right here. That's gonna be riding this thing for the 60 miles that it said it, this thing can go. That's a battery. And then here is a lot of electrical cables, like you know, so many type of cables. Now, what I'm gonna say is, when you're gonna be doing this, if you think you're not confident enough to do this, man, find somebody you can do it. Take it to a scooter shop, even to an electrician, somewhere I know. It's a pain in the ass, like, oh, come on, man, I just pay a thousand ninety nine, you know, uh, 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 pounds for this thing, and I have to go pay extra to get it fixed. But look, man, if you have to send this back in a policy, you have to pay the delivery cost to send it back to them, and they have to send a new one. And we, we ain't talking about just the money, the time. You send this back to them, it's going to take like maybe minimum three weeks, 21 days, or at least 15 days to get to there. You're waiting. And they have to receive it. Probably they have to make a new one for you, or they have to maybe fix the problem. So let's say it's going to take about a week to fix the problem. Then after that, then they have to send it back to you. It's going to take another three weeks to get it. Man, you'll be waiting for almost two months, and literally you're going to be paying us all to send it. So it's not waiting. Why can't we just pay that money that you're going to be paying to post it to them, to someone else who can do it. If you can do it to get it fixed for you, if they send you the pack, so you can keep writing your things and enjoy. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I did. I could easily say because I had mine for only four or five days and it broke down. No way, man, I ain't having that. But when I look at it, sending it back to them, paying minimum at least maybe 100 pounds or over 100 pounds because this thing is heavy to send it back to them. And then they're going to send it back to me, waiting. I will do it myself. Or if I can, I can pay someone 50 pounds to do it. That means I'm still saving 50 pounds. I mean, scooter is going to work as if it is original. I mean, we should not be passing after paying money, paying money, selling it. But look, man, this is happening. If it happens, you just have to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? So, coming back to the issue here, the electrical side of it has got different sort of cables. Very tiny one, very big one, very medium one. Man, you're going to have to be very, very careful with this. You know what I'm saying? Because you mess this up and cut any cable, they are done. That's it. This thing going to work again. And maybe they might turn out to tell you that, oh, because uh, you did it wrong or something happened. So your warranty is no, uh, they, you don't have warranty anymore. So they must start to tell you all this, you know, crap. Because obviously it's business. Nobody want to make profit and get a profit back. Everybody want to make money and keep it. You know what I'm saying? You way to pay, you don't want to get the money, but you want to keep it. So they want to try everything to make sure that you don't retain it. That's why you have to be careful. So, the cable, they, they got videos. QR actually got some videos on uh, their Facebook website. So, some of you have some problem with this scooter. Some say the pointer, they can't take the tire off. I haven't had a pointer yet. So, I don't know how to take the tire off myself. So, if that happened, I'll have a look. Or if I, if I did pass it, to take the tire and put it, but I'll make a video for you guys to see. But for now, my problem is just a controller that is a sport. So, the way I watched the video from what it did, the controller, and what I'm saying here is not the same. It's the same, but the color code or the colors they use in that video, and what I'm saying here, that this is some yellow thing, some small yellow, take them off, is not what I'm saying here. It's the same cable, but the colors are different. So the way you're going to go about this, or the way I'm going to go about it, that I think is the safest way, is what I'm trying to tell you guys out there. So if you have any problem, you deal with it like that. You want to watch everything, go to Facebook, just search QR. Once you, 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 you say QR, which is written here, you know the QR because you're probably bought it from you know. And you watch the videos about how to do so many things. And yeah, in that video, for instance, like the, 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 the sealant that they pull here, they never mention the video. So you might be thinking, I like, just take the boat in the north and the thing is coming off. And it, it did it. So that's another thing. So when you watch the video, I think it's just like fundamental of what you have to follow, but the rest you have to be clever enough to think quick about what do I do next. I hope nobody goes through this. I hope you just buy your thing, just enjoy it without you know having a problem. But if you do, then you're gonna end up like this. So let's go on. So now the cables here, they made a video about which one you're gonna be taking. And I believe what's gonna be happening is when you have the, the new controller, which unfortunately I should be showing it to you right now. But it's still, I still haven't it got delivered. But I have to make this video because by the time I get a controller, it's going to be late for me doing videos. So I just said, I will tell you what I'm going to be doing because that's what I'm going to be doing because I already, you know, know how it's going to be. You have to mirror. We have to use the mirror message. 
the the the, the mirror method uh, method is um why you gonna just first of all when you take this QR set you have to bring these cables out and then bringing these cables out these cables here you have to bring them out to bring them out you have to pull them nicely no no it's wrong because you might be ripping something pull them nicely and be gentle with them because the cable they can be fragile you tear one thing you trying to fix one problem you go cause another problem so you have to be careful you know what i'm saying you take that up you're gonna see a black box which i think is the alarm system on top of the silver one the silver one they all been bonded or hold in place with a double-sided tape which is not too strong to pull so once you get access to that don't pull the cable in in order to trying to get the silver thing try to see if you can get a silver thing with your hand use your hand to hold it and pull it that way you're not putting no tension on the on the cable and damaging or tearing any of them that's the best way to go about it so once you take the old one out from it put it down why so there's two things you can do if you're not too confident take your phone and video record how everything is take a cable cut all the uh they use a cable tie you know the zip cable tie which i got here because i know i'll be needing them so i actually bought one they use this zip cable tie cut them zip table cable ties off so you can get the cable you know like you know the wire is flexible so you pull them make a video of how they look how they all connected which one goes to which one or take a picture that's another way if you're not too confident you make a video so you can go back and watch it if you're making a mistake when you put in a new one or you take a picture of how the old one is connected then the next step is gonna be we're gonna do one-to-one -one. a one-to-one -one step is you take the new controller you put it exactly the way the old one is not inside but just outside you can put on the battery or put it anyway when you take one cable of the old controller when you remove that cable look on the new controller which cable is the same as the one you just removed the one that you remove that is the, the 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 cable that is no uh because there's two there's two connection here there's a connection that is connected with the controller and there's a connection that is connected with the cable system the cable system is what we're keeping the controller is what we want to get rid of and put new controller in so when you take that first cable out you hold the one that is the cable system you take your new controller you look for the same cable that you just taking off on the old one then you connect that one you take the second one you do it like that you do it gradually one to one don't take all the cables out because believe me if it's something if you think that you can do it you might get confused on which one goes to which one and you might end up blowing the controller if you plug something to another one give you different voltage you might blow the controller or even blow your motor once you blow your motor that's the end of the scooter you can have a controller have everything the whole scooter here is this is the engine the motor once you blow this up or burn it because once the high voltage go into the the winding which are the the, the, the small copper wires that they use to wind inside the motor they rated to take certain amount of power if you give them more than that because this battery is constantly giving power once you connect it there's a current running if the current is too much it's gonna blow the motor you don't want that so you have to be very careful you take one from the old one you watch on a new one exactly the one you just removed you connect it you do it like that so you take one from the old you connect to the new one you do it like you do like till all the cables on the old ones are taken off and all the cables are inserted into the new one so that way everything is done now that's on the end when you finish that go back and check to be sure that each connectors are clipped properly clip them back don't put too much attention and break it clip them just just be reasonable clip them back and when you clip all of them back ensure don't pull the power on yet and i forgot before you start doing all this make sure your scooter is off it's just like you can be running electricity and be working inside something that have electrical power you get yourself electrocuted in this situation you might not get yourself electrocuted you might short circuit something a wire touch another wire and then your motor is gonna go or something will catch fire so put the scooter off and be sure it's totally off there's no power in before you start doing that somebody will say maybe use the uh the alarm system to destabilize the whole power system but uh but the moment you take the alarm cable off and away 
I mean, that's because the alarm cable is going to come off as well because it's connected to the, the old controller. The moment you take it off, the alarm is going to go off as well. So there's no point using the alarm. Just make sure the power button is off. There's no power in it before you start that. So coming back to it, when you finish all that, connect all the, the, the old cables into the new controller, watch your video carefully or watch your picture carefully to see the way they were in the new one, is it the same way they, 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 in the old one that you've just taken or is it the same way they are in the new one? Check and be sure. When you're off, when, when you're very sure on, on it, everything is fine. What you're going to have to do is just press your power button and don't just go straight because it's a new controller. Maybe you haven't connected something carefully, so just press on it slowly to see if you have any effect on the motor. When the motor starts to turn, that means the new controller is working. Then you press it, change the gear to two slowly, change it to three slowly. And once you do it, I try to see if you can smell anything, like anything is burning or something. If something is burning, stop instantly. That means something is not connected. But maybe you made a mistake connecting one, uh, one, one cable into the wrong socket, probably causing problem already. So just stop, put it off. And have a look again go run again man it's, it's rather you spending a lot of time checking the things well than rushing through it and then blow it up even if QS is gonna say another part it's gonna take time you might just get frustrated why did I buy this man I don't buy this to keep in the house and what so just be careful you do it and make sure you do it carefully so by the end of the day when you pull this back you want to have your peace of mind you, you want to just get up, grab your thing, and go do your thing. You don't want to be coming back, you know, fixing things or opening what's wrong again. We don't want that. So that is how I am going to be replacing mine. When I get a controller, which I'm going to get today, it's going to be late. But if I can, I will do a short video about how I'm connecting the cables. And then you can see it as well. But exactly what I said, that's the procedures I'm going to use. The first step is mirroring. Mirroring is... When you look into the mirror, you see yourself back. So you're going to mirror the old controller and the new one. How all the cables are on the old controller, try to mirror it with that one. If you turn the old controller this way, turn the new controller that way. So they, they, they're in the same direction. So whatever this one is saying, it should be the same on that. So that way, you take one cable from here, you put it to that one. You take another cable from here, you put it to that one. So you do mirroring. And then after the mirroring, you do one to one. One cable at a time from the old one into one cable at a time into new one. You repeat the step until all the cables on the control, the old controllers are all removed. And you can literally leave the old controller, put it somewhere. And then all the cables on the new controller are all connected to the wiring system. So you know that everything is connected. That is how I am going to do my, I believe if you follow the simple steps that I've said right now, there shouldn't be any way why you can face this. Of course you can face this, just being careful and know what you're doing and just try to do it as simple as possible. You know what I'm saying? If you do it that way, you don't need anybody else to help you. You don't need to go to the mechanic shop or electrician or whatever, paying any extra money. You can fix your thing and even in future, if you have any problem, you can still go back and fix it. So that's the purpose of this video. So one thing as well I need to mention is that what Keyword uh, did here is that because they want this to be very water resistant. So I realized I want to open my all the connectors. They put just some silicone. You know, when, when they connect a clip in, they, they put some jelly silicone there. The reason why they do that is they do that for the silicone to seal the holes because the connectors go cables that are interlinking into some small, small, smaller socket inside. And those holes are there for the cable to pass through. So if there's any water from any weather money to get in and money to go, go through those holes, they will short circuit the system. They will breach and, and start because the electric current can, can go through water. So current will be flowing from one cable to another, which is not meant to be like that. And this thing can catch fire or you can start blowing up things and you might totally damage your, your scooter. That's why they use silicon. So don't be scared of that. When you see that, all you have to do is use the same system. If you think the silicone is making it hard for you to separate the, the, the connectors, just use maybe a, a, a slight screwdriver and knife just to like, you know, scrape the silicone off, you know, just like, don't, don't cut it. I'm not gonna advise you to cut through because you might end up cutting something. So just scrape the silicone off gently. It doesn't matter how long it's gonna take. 
You rather spend more time to get your thing working and to rush and spoil it. Just scrape it slowly. And once you're able to lose it, that means you can connect a new one. Do it for all of them. And when you finish, all you have to do is, uh, there's no, it's no mandatory. It always, it's not like a mask that you have to uh, zip tie the cables as they were. But I would just say that when you put those cables, any cables that you see are coming from the connector because of the, 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 the controller. The controller have, uh, I mean, different socket coming out. And each socket might have like three cables coming out from there. If three cables are coming out from there and you connect them, I would advise use the zip tie to tie those three together so they're one unit. So you don't have to have so many cables, one going, another one that you don't, you don't want that. You want to have something simple that if anything happens in the future, you just go and say, okay, what is it? Okay, this one, I'll take it there. It's easier. So try to arrange the cables like that. Zip tie them. And when you zip tie them, before you put them back into the, 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 the box again, because the space is not too big, make sure you don't squeeze them, but try to compact them to bring them together and zip tie that, not too hard. Just zip tie it, make them free, but don't make them loose. And then put them back. And <clears throat> once you put them back, I actually know what I need. Uh, you'll be needing um, this right here. I mean, it's, it's not anything special. It's a, a double-sided tape because you will need to secure the controller from moving. When you ride the scooter, maybe jumping or doing what, you don't want the controller bouncing. If it's doing that, it can cause, cause what we, uh, the electricians call, what we call a, a dry joint. Something on the board can just, you know, like separate from the board, but not completely off. So sometimes instead of your scooter maybe like is working, another time it's not working, that means you dry joint the controller, that means the controller will go in. So secure the controller tight to the base. You put a double-sided tape on the base, once everything is done, the first thing you should go back is your controller. You're going to put that, you hold a cable with one hand and the controller following. You put a controller, what's the cable key? Because the cable are not that long, so they will follow the controller. You put a controller on the double-sided tape. You press it down firmly to be sure that it's not moving. Then you put another double-sided tape on the controller and put a black box, which is your alarm system, on that. When you finish all that, then you put your wires in and zip tie them or cable tie them the way I explained in the, in the previous conversation, zip tie them. Then what you have to need again is uh, actually go this. Well, actually go uh, this, a gasket sealant or just a black sealant. Uh, well, you can get, to be honest, you can get any silicone. Any silicone will do because when you, when you screw this, they're gonna put compression. And then the silicone is gonna sit between the two metals. So that's gonna make the silicone try to escape by doing that. It's gonna water tie the whole area. And then what you have to do is just get some nice cloth and clean the leftover or the excess coming out just to make your scooter look nice. But I decided to use this because I like to do my things to last. I don't I don't wanna go by do I don't have time. You know what I'm saying? I don't have time to go by doing that. So I like to do my things to go well. So I got this, I got two of them, maybe I just need one, but I got two. So what you have to do is when you when you open it, pull this. Don't don't pull too much. You have to go around the the whole thing. But please, when you're doing that, don't pull too much in the hole where your boat is gonna be going through. Because in future, if you don't have a power tool like this, and you're gonna be using your hand to uh, take the alarm key off, you might strike it because these are gonna hold those bolts with the metal together in place even though they silicone they, they they're not too flexible they're a little bit solid this might be holding that so just when you do your, your your silicone just put it around and put it in the middle you know the size of the plate as you say try to put it in the middle if you put it on the side the moment you put a plate the whole thing might just like kind of like shrink and trying to go out, you know, because of the pressure. So put it in the middle. So when you put a plate on and you start screwing, you screw on it. And by the time they're coming out, they spread evenly. Part of it will go this way, part of it will go that way. So that means you get the evenly, you know, uh, protection uh, around. So do it all around. You know, you start from this point, the corner here, do it all around. Go all the way. And when you come your way, Q1 notch and leave your hole, just... Where this, this big cable go in or where your cable system go all the way to the body. It's a whole day. Make sure you put a silicone around it as we put the silicone around the cable because you don't want water finding way from that going into that. So you put a silicone on that and that. And once you're done with the silicone, 
Literally, you don't have to put a silicone on the plate. You don't have to put it on the deck. The reason why it's not advisable to put it on the plate, if you put it on the plate and in fixing this back, uh, you're trying to align it, you might start moving the silicone. So just put it on the deck itself or on the actual body. And once you finish, all you have to do is just slide this one in. Don't put it like this and start dragging. You keep, you know, spreading the silicone without pressure. And by the time you apply pressure, you lose some of the silicone, which is going to make it all water, not too watertight. So what, you, what you're going to have to do is put this in first. Of course, when you hit there, just drop it down nicely. Don't press it. Drop it down nicely because you have to line them on a hole. So go now to see if you can see any light coming out from under. That means that if you don't see, just adjust them slowly and try to see if you can see all of them. Once you see, you can see all of them. Use your hand to put to apply pressure. Put one here, one at the back. Don't do it from here because then uh, you, you have to apply, you know, a simultaneous continuous pressure on it. You know what I'm saying? So you, you do it like this and you put pressure on it like this. You come to the middle, you put pressure. Then you put one on this corner, one on this corner. You apply pressure. You do the same. So that way the pressure is evenly spread around the whole deck. Once you get this in, you go now with your, remember, the two knot without a bolt go in the front. So you lift this up again, you put that knot there, and you screw one. When you screw one, don't screw this one. You screw one here, come at the back to screw one here. So you're going to be like in anger. All, all you're trying to do is to make sure that you you let the force is spread evenly you don't let the force like because when you start screwing here what will happen is you start screwing because the silicone is there and the metal starts sitting so it will, it will start pushing the silicone out when you see the print it's like pressure it's just like if you hold a balloon with air in and you squeeze it you see that the, the pressure you apply in the center is trying to push the the, the 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 pressure both sides so the balloon starts like it be a little bit bigger on this side bigger on this side once your hand is going a little bit deeper into it you don't want that so you put one here you do it diagonally you put one here you put one here you come back you put one here you put one here you come to the first one one here one here you come to the back one one here one here one here one here one here one here you do it like that so the pressure is applied evenly and when you're doing that don't go with a full spin if you're using an a instrument, like, I mean, a, a tool like this, a cordless, don't go with a full thing like, no, you go just small. Once it's tight a little bit, you move to the next one. When you did it for all of them, and you show that every one of them get that same, almost same amount of torque, then you go on a hard on them. Then you go on a, again, don't go hard, you know, just like from this one to that now. You're going to go hard on this one, again, diagonally. You do it all round, and once you've done that, then um, you should be back in business because you already tested a scooter. And remember, before, when you put a silicone, before you put the, the top plate on to start screwing, go back to put your scooter on again and try to say it's working. Because it might be when you put in the controller down, you know, trying to do all that, you mist mistakenly maybe unplug some clip or something, you don't know, you don't want to do that. And then come again, you know, making mess like taking the silicone out, putting it back. You're only going to make it, you know, not really watertight. You know what I'm saying? So you make sure you check that and make sure the motor is working. Everything is working. The brake light, the horn, everything is working. When you show, then you do what I've just told you to screw the whole thing tight. And once you're done, you're back in business. I hope this video, you know, help all of you out there who might be planning to buy this but because of some of the reviews you saw they scare you off or who have this already having problem with this don't worry man i mean it's life there's nothing that lasts forever you know anything you have might have plenty. you just have to be patient and work with it this scooter i'm gonna give a thumb up to kira i've had some scooters before i don't just say love scooter man you're paying um a thousand in in, in london england you pay thousand ninety nine pounds for this there are scooters out there for over three thousand pounds they, they, they still get a breakdown and you still get a fees them. And there's no point in spending that much money and then having problem or spending less money having problem. They tell you you are going to have problem. You know what I'm saying? When you, when you, when you got those problems, you just have to deal with it. You don't have to be scared of anything. So 
my review and uh, for this scooter, I'm gonna give this scooter um, a four star. The reason why I'm gonna give this scooter a four star is that the build quality is is very, 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 very good. You know, solid. When you're on this scooter, you feel like, man, I can, I can do something. You know what I'm saying? You know, scale. Oh shit, man! If if I go too far, maybe that that shock look a little bit frightening. Then no, you you just only think like you having fun. You know what I'm saying? That's how this thing is. So this thing is good. The only downfall of it is the problem coming with like you know people are getting frustrated. I was frustrated as well, but I was just a bit calm. Now everybody's calm because you you want to enjoy something. You don't want to have be having extra time doing all that I'm just playing right now. So I can understand that. The downside of it is that Kiwa need to start getting their supply of all the auxiliaries, all the parts that they don't make themselves. They need to make sure that they spend a little bit of money to get a good quality one, the good lasting quality one. It's better to make a little profit with no returns of your scooter back to the factory and keep those profit than to make a larger profit with returns coming and you have to refund the people or start spending extra money doing shipment you know, back to people or selling parts. That's what Kiwa need to do. They need to be sure that whoever is supplying to them, they have to make sure that those suppliers are supplying the good quality. They pay good quality. You know, uh, they pay money for good quality product. So that way, this scooter will be 100% and this scooter can get a five star. With the speed, I have no problem with the speed of this scooter. This scooter is really fast. I, I'm not just saying it. I am crazy when it comes to riding things. Even when I'm driving, all my cars I have, I have a BMW M7. 760 airline v12 engine the smallest car of mine is, uh, is a bmw 525 that's supposed to be a three liter car you can imagine a guy with those type of you know power of, of car would like something very fast and this scooter to me is very fast it's a scooter it's not a motorbike if you want to go you know riding like 100 miles an hour then you go for a super bike you can go do that you want to ride this thing you want to be safe you want to enjoy it you don't want to ride this thing and end up in hospital and end up being dummy and this thing is amazingly very fast as well if you riding this thing downhill believe me man you you you're never gonna ride it you're never gonna put a whole truck it's moving too fast if you're on a level ground it's still fast so i don't see any reason why people saying yo it's not fast it's not that i think it's fast and besides you paying what you're paying a thousand uh 99 pounds for this you go and buy one of them dualtron ultra or tiny be paying all our like, three thousand pounds or something and then some of them, they can only take you up to what, 80 kilometers, about, I don't know, maybe 45 miles or something. And this year, you're paying about 1,000 pounds to get in about 30, 35 miles from that. Come on, man. Let's be real. Let's be real. So, look, shout out to all of you out there, you know, taking your time to watch this video. I hope it helped you to understand, uh, you know, uh, what's happening here and to fix some of your things without, you know, getting too worried. So, if you like this video, just give a you know give a thumb out to the video you know uh subscribe so probably if i put anything else about because i'll be making video any problem i have with this scooter i'll make a video to put it out there because i mean i i, I just I, look let's be real these guys cure people they made an effort to bring something out which is very amazing for us yeah of course it's not gonna be 100 percent but some of the problems out there we can literally just face that without even making too much of it. people make too much of it like this thing is that this thing. if your mall guy is loose come on man if a mortgage is loose, it's just a literal like taking alarm key to tie that. What's the big deal about mortgage? Somebody make like, oh, mortgage loose, this, this, that. Moving things that are screwed together will move with time because of vibration. If if you all understand the law of fixes or the law of science, it will it will move with time. That's why when you're driving your car, sometimes you start hearing noises and things like that. But the only thing is just tighten them up. If you don't have the tools, you, you go get one dollar, one pound or something, get it in and tighten them up, then you're back in business. So um just um give a give, give a thumb up to this video, you know, and like this video because I hope this video help you and I know this video is gonna help most of you who are struggling with this scooter. Don't give it up on this scooter yet because it's a very nice scooter, solid build. I, I am more concerned about the build quality than and the problem is. Uh, some of you don't even know the biggest problem of any moving thing if the motor were to be having a problem That should be your problem because once that motor is gone man, that's the end of the scooter There's nothing you can unless you have to send it back to uh, You know some company they have to rewind the motor and maybe you might even get the same power again you know, I don't know man, but nobody that's a good thing Nobody has ever complained about this cure of having that the motor break down anything. That's a good thing That means the engine is still good and the body is good it's just electrical thing and some one or two things. So, 
I mean, I'm gonna leave it here, but I hope you guys, you know, find this video very useful and, uh, you know, help yourself, you know, to do one or two things. So until I make another video, shout out to all of you. And please like the video, so that way I should be able to make another one. Thank you for watching.